if in the body we have cell, there must be a junction in between them, right? So, next short note question is the cell membrane. Let's discuss about the cell membrane junction or cell junctions. In short, cell junctions, right? You have either two, three or four marks of question or you have a long question about the cell membrane and the cell junctions right about uh, approximately 6 to 8 marks question right so you should be knowing about the cell junction there are typically major three types of junction first one is yes the first one is tight junctions even if you do all these questions Remember, this is going to not only prepare you for the viva and your uh, theory, but it is also preparing you for the, yes, your uh, exam, entrance exam in the PG4. For now, you should be knowing uh, what is important for the short notes as well as uh, long questions, right? So, tight junction. Now, what is this tight junction? The name itself suggests they are tight. So, they are adherent, uh, they are adjusting or they are stick uh, together the cells too much tightly, right? So, what is the importance? Remember in the body, whatever happening physiologically, 99.9% .9 of the time it is important for your body, right? It is happening in the right way, right? So, tight junction, what are they first of all? They are the present in the outer membrane. Outer membrane fuse together strongly. And that's why they are known as the tight junction, right? So they fuse together very tightly and they form a barrier. Remember, if you allow everything inside, that is harmful for your body. So, you need some type of barrier in which the tight junction will help you, right? And barrier for the movement of ions and other solutes. From where to where? From one side of cell membrane to other. Right to other or another, so that is the function of tight junction. Remember, the tight junction have specific areas. In specific areas, only three uh, areas they are present. So you should be knowing all the three areas, right? For the example, they have a specific locations where these tight junctions are present. Are first thing in the brain, that is choroid plexus. Choroid plexus in the kidney renal tubular walls and in the GIT that is your epithelium of intestinal mucosa intestinal mucosa so you should be knowing all three examples because only in these three areas, the tight junctions are present. Uh, if we have to see the diagram of the tight junction, here we go. This is the uh, diagram of tight junction. Don't worry about the desmosomes for now. Just have a look on the tight junction that you can see these are firmly attached with each other, right? So, this is forming the barrier. Whenever some things are required, then only uh, they can pass through. Otherwise, this tight junction will not allow the substance to pass through or pass across. So, there are two ways of transportation are possible from one side to another. What is that? Suppose these are the, yes, what is it? It is the transcellular uh, 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 junctions, that is tight junctions. So, there are only two ways possible for the transport. And what are those? One is the through and through the cell or through the cell and then once it enters inside, then it will come between the cells, right? So, which is known as the transcellular because it is coming through the cell, 
right? It is known as transcellular pathway across the epithelium, right? And why? Because the tight junction are blocking the extracellular pathway, which is known as paracellular pathway, which is blocked by the tight junction. And that's why only transcellular mechanism through which the substance can enter inside the cell or the go from one side of cell to another side. So that is about the tight junction. Let's move on to the another thing that is the second um, cell junction which is known as desmosome and adherent junction. Adherent junction. Now what these will do? Yes, they hold the adjacent they hold the adjacent cell firmly together in areas subjected to stretching, right? If I will give you the example, the easiest example will be the skin. The skin is already stretchable, right? Somewhat stretchable. So, uh, where the uh, desmosomes and adherent junctions are present, otherwise what will happen? The cell will be disintegrated, right? So, uh, the uh, junctions which are re required to uh, hold the cell firmly whenever there is a stretching. So, whenever, remember the desmosomes and adherent junction, just remember about the stretching of the cells, right? An example is the skin. Now, one more important point about this is the two membrane separation distance in these two things are how much? It is 15 to 20 nanometer. It is 15 to 20 nanometer, right? side by side let's simultaneously see uh, let's see the diagram so you'll understand it better that suppose this is the yes desmosomes and adherent junction you can see over here those are made up of proteins and 15 to 20 nanometers is the distance between these two now uh, these are uh, present in the skin majority in the skin they hold the two cell membranes together right so that is about the desmosome and adherent junction let's go to the third junction that is type of junction that is yes the gap junctions which are very very important in the especially in the heart circulatory system or these are known as nexus these are known as nexus right they form a connection that's why it is known as nexus now where they are present they are nothing but the channels which is helping in the connection between two cells connection between two cell uh, what they do uh, if they are connecting two cell and acting as a channels so uh, they permit, they permit rapid propagation of electrical potential changes, electrical potential changes. Now, uh, you must be familiar with the gap junction in the heart. That's why the heart will work as the syncytium right as a whole functional unit one functional unit uh, ventricle work as a separate syncytium and atria will work as a separate syncytium but whole ventricles are um, made up of uh, million cells but they contract in the almost same time right that's why we are able to have the systole and diastole right so they are present in the cardiac as well as smooth muscles right Okay, and why it can be possible? It is because of direct 
transfer of ions without traversing into ECL. So, from one cell to another cell they are going right, but they are not at all entering into the ECF right. So, you can see over here that this is the plasma membrane through and through they are going right over here you can see through and through they are going from one cell to another right but they are not entering into the ECF. Suppose this is the extracellular space as you can see and these are the gap junction membrane right. So, they will uh, get open up and they can go through and through from the one cell to another cell without going into the ECF right without going into the ECF and the diameter is approximately 1.5 nanometers. They are connecting basically two cytosols of the cells, two cytosols of the cells, right. So, this is about the cell junction.